Cheapo. Rejoice, peasants, for a crowned head has found himself a new mate. At least I think that's how a royal wedding goes. I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, you know, those people who are famous for being born famous have got married or something, I don't know. It's weird. People love the royal family for that, but hate people like Kim Kardashian. Um, they always go, you know, oh, they're just famous for being famous. I don't know. It's double standards in it. Anyway, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of wedding going on, and it's been all over the British media, like a thing that's all over the media, so uh, the thing I find to do that's quite interesting after a royal wedding is to look back through the uh, news stories and see if you can find all the bad news the government's been trying to bury by uh, releasing it at the same time everybody's talking about the wedding. Anyway, yes, one of the greatest things about these magical royal occasions is the pound shops get really into it with, you know, crazy shit like, I don't know, decorative spoons with bad pictures on. Oh, look. Here's one now. From when Prince Harry married what is quite obviously a uh, human female, which is quite rare for royal families. It's only fairly recently they've started marrying uh, things that are quite obviously human. Previously they were just kind of, I don't know, like socks shoved with mints and brought to life by dark magic? I don't know. Anyway, it's all good, and frankly uh, the royal family had been inbreeding for so long that I imagine if they didn't start uh, getting married to people from outside their immediate wheelhouse then their children would probably have been born as sort of semi-sentient sponge creatures made of a, mostly of green goo or something. Anyway, here's some people, look. There he is. Prince Harry with his afro wig and his drawn-on beard. He's slowly turning into Bob Ross, which frankly I completely am behind, um, 100%. And there is the Lady Meghan, who I don't really know anything about, but she seems quite nice, so good for her. They seem like quite a nice couple, actually, which again is relatively rare for royal weddings, so uh, there we go. And you can have your tiny commemorative teaspoon. That's not really a teaspoon, it seems a bit too small for a teaspoon, actually. Maybe it's a sugar spoon or something, or maybe they've just made it out of less metal, so it's even cheaper than usual. Who knows? It was, of course, made by our friends at PMS. Premenstrual syndrome. Mm -mm. Thanks for the spoon, guys. Oh, no, they are calling it a teaspoon. Look, Harry and Meghan Teaspoon. Even though their names are actually Henry and Rachel, I believe, or Rebecca or something, and, like, Harry and Meghan are their middle names. And you know what they say about people who go by their middle names? Absolutely nothing. Why would they? Anyway, yes, it comes in a commemorative um, the box to stop it infecting your other teaspoons with uh, slightly dodgily photoshopped pictures with a funny red background where it doesn't quite look like they've uh, cut round them properly. Ah, but there we are. It'll keep Gran happy. No, it won't. Gran doesn't want these spoons either. Nobody wants these spoons. Anyway, I was quite pleased to see that in Poundland right next to a mask of the royal family, so you can pretend you're one of the royals when you're robbing banks or something. And, you know, what would go with your teaspoon more... <sighs> Do you know, it's hard to describe this. It is literally a really bad photo of the groom's brother printed in far too lower resolution. Ready? There we are. Yeah, it's all blurry and out of focus, and he's got a weird expression on his face. <sighs> Thanks, guys. I, mean, oh, I don't know what he did to deserve this, but as far as I can tell, because um, they have these masks every so often in there, all the other ones seem half decent, but these ones, not so good for poor old Prince William. Why that is, we may never know. Maybe they just couldn't get a decent photo at the time. Maybe it was the uh, Photoshop Minions week off, and there was a small child doing um, work experience doing it instead. Who can say? Anyway, da warning danger of suffocation. Could you really strap this cardboard to yourself so, so strongly that it would stop you breathing? How bizarre. I thought it meant for the bag when I first saw it, but no. Not suitable for children under five due to length of elastic. That and the fact it'll fucking suffocate, apparently. Product P. William 01. Absolutely classic. Right, let's poke his eyes out, which uh, is every Republican's dream. There we go. And now it's even worse. That's tremendous. So let's see what that looks like on, then. Great, and that's how you tell it's a royal wedding. Um, I was
was a bit disappointed, actually, because there was quite a big uh, media push. Um, it was like I was getting emails from Poundland saying, oh, don't forget to go in and look at our royal wedding range, blah, 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 blah. And they had bugger all when I actually went in. I went into all three shops in uh, Norwich and then at the last minute made a mad dash because um, I was in Sheffield to the big uh, Meadow Hall uh, Poundland they have there as a shopping centre called Meadow Hall and yeah absolutely nothing in Meadow Hall at all and very little in the Norwich ones all I got was a spoon and this weird mask and ooh, oh this is quite good fun look you can make it look like different people there we are that's that bloke from the grocers ah fantastic um yeah I don't know I was expecting some more tat there was some sort of vaguely generic stuff like here are some cupcake holders and they have the the flag on them and yeah great Thanks, guys. This is what we need. This is what we demand. We want weird calendars. We want weird spoons. For the next royal wedding, sort it out, folks. Or maybe they had a load and I got to the shops too late. I don't know, because my time machine is broken. I accidentally spilled a load of gin on it. It's a long story. Anyway, I wish I could point out things easier. I wish I could point out that... Oh, wait! Look at that. Give that snore. What for... Oh. I thought it was for pointing at things, but apparently it's for hurting people who are snoring. That, that's great. For a king, super king size reach. Hey, king, prince, there's a segue. <clears throat> Pow. Yeah, thanks. Get a perfect sleep. Man, this, this package is a mess. Where are you going on here? King size, snore, weird sort of cartoons, and then photos of cats. And what's the cat got to do? I don't know. This is all over the shop. Anyway, it is an extendable snore hand. Reminds me of that thing from Futurama, the thing longer or whatever that Professor Farnsworth used to have. So yeah, this is a slightly bizarre thing. How long does it extend? Bloody hell, quite far actually. Also, gotta say, really well made. I think this is actually a selfie stick. Um, but they've just kind of in removed the thing you put your phone in on the end and stuck in a slightly troubling comedy cartoon finger. It's very spongy. There's no particular um, strength in the end of it, which is good if you're prodding people who are snoring, as it is suggesting, I suppose. And that, friends, is how the royal family clean their teeth. And that's how they get their eyes poked out, because they're snoring, which is now a capital offence, apparently. Yeah. Interesting. Also, it has five fingers, so it's not the standard uh, cartoon hand, which of course only has three. My only worry about this, um, um it's, to be honest, it looks a little bit like a sex toy or something. Um, one that you could perhaps operate from a safe distance in case your sexual partner bites or something. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. If they did make one that was just like a closed fist or something, I think that would be more of a worry. But uh, there we are. There is an extending finger for all your extending finger needs. Oh. Right, what else have we got then? Oh, but I want to mention, actually, before I forget, just a little shout out. Uh, they've got these screen protector kits in for the Nintendo Switch, and they're quite good. They will protect your Switch's screen from scratches and stuff, and they're only a quid, and they're quite good. So I thought I'd mention that in case you're passing by Poundland and you have a Switch and you want to protect its screen. Because, you know, that's how we roll. Next up, small cars! Yes, for the mere, mere price of one pound, Poundland will sell you eight fucking cars. What a world we live in, guys. Mini street racers. I think this is mini. Drive. Let's race. Yes, let's do this thing. And there's naff all on the back. Uh, fast freewheel multicoloured cars. Remove all packaging from the toy and dispose of it carefully so that it is out of sight and reach of your child. Remember, packaging can be a choking and suffocation danger. Hooray for packaging, everyone! So yeah, that's from Fantastic and has the really super depressed onion on it. There he is, just uh, in case you haven't seen him before. Yeah, so I was quite intrigued by this. There are little pullback cars or something, but they don't really appear to be anything. I suppose that's why you get eight for a pound. Let's have a look. They're sort of uh, weird ice pop looking clear plastic things. So what flavours we got? We've got uh, strawberry or possibly cherry. Uh, we've got orange. We've got apple or could be lime. Uh, blue raspberry, because raspberries are blue now for some reason. And that's it. And yeah, the wheels go fine. <sighs> I mean, it's one of those what do you expect for a pound things. I think my problem with these is they're so bloody obviously empty. 
They're just kind of a nothing. They've made them too translucent. Should have made them opaque, put some colours on or something. I mean, I imagine it's trying to cash in on like, the Fast and Furious films or something, because they've had them in their bloody ages. But yeah, they're not the most impressive of things. It's one of those things that, I mean, it is cheap, which isn't a problem because it's Poundland, you expect that, but it kind of feels cheap, I don't know. And they're called... <sighs> I don't know, they seem a bit too small for young children and our old children really going to get any joy out of them? Because they're not that fast wheeling, actually, looking at it. You do need to put a little bit of uh, oomph behind them. Mm. Can we target, make out what sort of cars they're based on? No, because it's too translucent. Some sort of SUV, maybe. That uh, looks probably a Volkswagen Beetle. I don't know. That's the same as that one. That That's also the same as that one. That, I think, is different and is some sort of hatchback or something. Uh, so it is though that's the beetle again and oh this is new some sort of uh, truck or similar or possibly different design of SUV well how interesting that is but the great thing about having eight of them is if you buy another packet you'll have 16 and I think in this day and age that's very important oh I missed this one what's that that was one of, one of those oh god I wish I knew how to be a proper YouTube star oh shit son vlog star it's actually said vlog, but I tend to say vlog just to annoy people. It's very effective. So I haven't actually uh, seen what's inside this, but it's uh, a small tripod and one of those things to hold your phone to film, which I do keep losing, so that is quite a useful thing to have. Find inside a step-by-step -step guidebook, you can be a vlog star and selfie tripod stand. Note, phone device not included. As I bought this literally in Poundland, I was not expecting to get a free phone with it, but uh, thank you for pointing that out. And what does Emoticon Eddie say? Step by step guide how you can be a vlog star. Also, he says, my existence is pain. Kill me. Kill me now. He's not having a good time with it. Um, yes, yeah, so this is volume one. I've not seen any future volumes. <laughs> and includes tips from top vloggers. Fantastic. Um, there we are, vlogstar.com. That's a Twitter handle and a website I'll never visit. Learn with our easy step-by-step -step guide on how to become a vlogstar. Our guide will give you all the information and practical hints and tips from today's top star vloggers to enable you to become the vlogstar you've always dreamed of becoming. I have bad dreams. I do not want to be that man. He kills people and then eats their flesh and then tells you what he had for lunch, and that is his vlog. I do not want to be this man. Find inside. Oh, yeah, we see all this. Right. So, unless let's get the amazing uh, gubbins out. Oh, God. Oh, no, it's just a... Hey, I must be pissing tripod and the damn phone stuff. Oh, you chiselers. <laughs> I don't believe it. It doesn't have the bit in I actually want. <laughs> is this why they ended up in Poundland? Or have I just got a bad one? Oh, I'm not sure they have them in there anymore. I can't check. Well... Well, that has ruined my life in many different ways. But anyway, we can read this book, which I'm sure will be super useful. So what is a vlog then? Video vlog is where you just like talk about your life and do it to camera and hope that people like you. And that is pretty much a large percentage of YouTube, I suppose. Copyright 2015 by Vlogstar, so it's hideously out of date by now. In fact, if anything's printed on paper, by the time it's come out of the fucking machine, it'll be out of date when it's YouTube. Introduction and Tick List. That is a list of episodes of The Tick, which is a uh, generally very good television show. Um, there was an animated version, and then there was that version with Patrick Warburton, and now there's another version on Amazon Prime, I think, with the excellent Peter Serafinovich. And... Uh, I've enjoyed all of them, actually, and they're all different. Um, Hooray for the Tick, one of the few things which is frequently rebooted in a different way and yet is always good. Hey, so you want to become a vlog star? We think that's awesome, because it means we sold you this book. So we've created this guide to get you started, plus added hints and tips from expert vloggers such as Charlie McDonald. I know him, he's a nice guy. Essie Button, I don't know her, and Patricia White, I don't know her either, sorry. We're here to inspire you to start your very own YouTube channel, and whether you're a complete newbie or a seasoned pro, why would you season yourself? Do you want people to eat you? This is weird. We've got tips and tricks to help you become the next YouTube vlogger sensation. <clears throat> There's a bit asterisk here. Asterisk will not work. You are entirely at the mercy of YouTube's annoying algorithms. <laughs> Vlogstar Volume 1 also comes with essential vlogging accessory, the Vlogstar Selfie Tripod Stand. No, it pissing didn't. God. Full of lies. Or Ooh. Ooh, the ears on that are freaking me out slightly. I don't know why. It's like an evil Kirby. Um, right. Your dreams and aspirations. We know that all you want to do is get straight to it. Set up your camera, get your staging looking perfect. Ha! None of us ever managed that. And start filming. But remember, there are some fun and important things you'll need to think about before getting on the road, blah, blah, blah. Why do you want to be a YouTube star? For example, 
I want to be famous. Do you have to give an example as to why somebody wants to do something? Surely that's more of an internal process. I want to be famous. I'd love to inspire millions of people across the world to um, wander through a Japanese forest and piss around near a corpse while wearing a silly hat. There we are. What is your ultimate goal with your YouTube channel? Uh, to go over to Twitch? Who is your favourite YouTube star? Why do you like to watch their videos? I love Joe Bloggs. My favourite YouTube star is lots of them. Um, I'm going to pick one and completely at random off my subscription list, which I can actually see just out of the left corner of my eye if I turn my head. Okay, I said that. It's actually slightly too far away and I can't focus on it. Hang on. Slope's Game Room. There we are. He's my favourite YouTube star of the day. DJ Slope. Daniel Ibbotson. He's a good guy. These answers will be super helpful when you are planning what to film. If you get stuck on what to put into each episode, you can always refer back to these... Uh, right, again... Uh, sorry, uh, that's just my will to live escaping through my mouth. Right. <clears throat> Pro tip. Be yourself. Oh, God. I was going to be uh, the Watcher Uatu from Marvel Comics, but apparently I have to be something that's myself. Well, who would have fucking known? Whilst it's good to have an inspiration or an idol, you still need to be yourself and gain your own audience that are there because of you. A big mistake a lot of people make is simply trying to copy their favourite YouTube exactly like them. Be yourself, be different, be unique, says Andy, AJ3 FIFA. I feel bad for taking the piss at the start now, because that's actually really good advice. Thank you, Andy. Vlog and pro trip. Stop procrastinating and set up your channel now! It doesn't matter if you're late to the YouTube party, just get to the party! And your doo-doo. Well, that's kind of true as well, isn't it? Because there's no good going, mm, and then not actually doing anything. I mean, you've got to at least bloody try, haven't you? Grab that tripod! <clears throat> Look, you're just rubbing it in now, guys. You're really rubbing it in. Get those ideas going and start filming. Vlog a pro trip. Start YouTube because you're passionate and want to make videos, not to just gain subscribers and become famous. Yeah, because the same bit is almost certainly not going to happen anyway. Do something you're interested in. Have some fun. And oh my god, how to set up your YouTube channel. This is probably out of date now. You probably need like 43 different bloody... Uh, I don't know, they probably send you phone codes and... You have to get a signed letter of authority from the Pope before you can begin it and stuff. Customise your YouTube channel. Need a hand? Tweet us! We will not respond because we've already gone bust, probably. How to upload your video. Use a USB key to transfer the video file from one device to another. Wow. Thanks, guys. Oh, well, this is it's quite practical advice, but almost certainly out of bloody date now. Sit back and enjoy. You have now officially uploaded your YouTube video. You seem to have missed the part about making it and just told us how to do the technical stuff. Anyway, pro tips. Use a tripod stand. Well, I would, guys, but you didn't piss and give me one, did you? I will get over that eventually. I just really wanted a weak little tripod that said Vlogstar on it. That would have made my year. Um, use the Vlogstar selfie tripod. <sighs> Set your lighting. Getting the lighting right can make the difference and you're looking great and it's seeming like you've accidentally filmed a scary ghost or vampire. Yeah, if you actually did film a scary ghost or a vampire, you'd probably get more hits. Of course, if scary ghosts or vampires are the look you're going for, then good lighting would need it for that too. Basically, we own a company that sells lights. Don't put the light directly behind or in front of you. It'll give you a weird shadow or wash you out completely. Well, oh, that's true. Light yourself from the side. Where possible, use three lights. Yeah, but I've got three lights. I've got one to my left, one to my right, and one above. And it still looks like fucking ass. Pro tip three. Check your sound. Check your sound before you wreck your sound, or something. Have you ever had a phone conversation not been able to hear the person on the other line because the sound keeps cutting out? Well, bully for you, big tits. Um, if your filming device doesn't have a dedicated microphone to record sound, try sitting in a quiet room. You don't record, you just sit in a quiet room and meditate over your loss. It helps to have a sign on your door letting other people know you need quiet. Filming in progress, please be quiet, do not enter. Yeah, I'm sure they'll bloody uh, turn Downton Abbey down for that. Editing your videos can affect the quality of the sound, so stick to the original edit where possible. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that, but yeah, the more you uh, spit out a file and the more YouTube compresses it, the worse it will sound. Music. A lot of people underestimate how important music is to setting the mood atmosphere of the video. Tell the problem with music. God, you've basically got to use their built-in template stuff these days or you may get immediately shot in the chin by the YouTube copyright sniper. Test shoots. Yes, a very good idea. Before you film anything, test it and make sure it looks all right. And if it doesn't, your videos will end up looking like mine. Think about that for a second. Uh, test the sound by checking your microphone source. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, yep, yep. Think about your background in your videos. Ah, oh, yes, there's that old joke, isn't it? Behind every successful YouTuber is an Ikea bookcase. I always find for beauty videos, a plain background is best so it doesn't distract from what you're doing. Yeah, that's a good plan. Which is why I use this uh, very, very plain looking brown thing so it does not distract from the items, which are, of course, the stuff that I'm totally lying. I just happened to film a video on my dad's old sofa one day to show something off. Anyway, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. 
turn your viewers into friends. I thought it said turn your friends into viewers for a second, and that worried me. Building a community. Building a fan base. I started my channel, blah, 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 the best advice I've received. The best advice I ever received was listen to your fans. When you first start your channel, you have 100% control of the type of videos you want to put out. But as your channel grows and your family becomes larger, it turns into a collaborative effort. And I don't know if I entirely agree with that, because, of course, the thing is, uh, you'll only hear from the most vocal minority of an audience. And uh, the, you know, the silent watching majority, you will not hear nothing from whatsoever. So, you know, you got to keep things like stats in mind, or use my method, which is do whatever I feel like at the time, and that's about it, really. Social media, vlog star tips. Do you have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, or any other social media account? If so, close them all, because they're creepy, and they're just after your data. Use them to link to your channel. Let's hang out on Google. Yeah, that, that's... Mm. Well, it kind of works, Google Hangouts, these days, doesn't it? Only took 43 years. Blah, blah, blah. Collaborate, yes. Privacy, yes. Don't set your videos to private, because then nobody can see them. This, this is fairly basic stuff. Ask Vlogstar. Ah, go on then. Charlie. I do like Charlie. He's a nice guy. Come on then. Tell us some stuff, Charlie. Be passionate. I find that, even if I might not share a share a, if I if I might not slur, if I might not be drinking the uh, soft drink slur at the time, I might not share a vlogger's specific interest. Just seeing someone being excited about something they love is enough to keep me engaged. Hooray, Tat! Yay! Find fellow YouTubers you love, connect with them, and make great stuff with them. Yes, the top vloggers might not have time to collab with you. Co collab? Co collab? I was talking to um, somebody the other day about whether that's pronounced collab or collab, because it seems to have changed to collab recently, which is uh, pretty weird. Me and Jay Foreman were talking about it. We came to the conclusion that collab sounds weird. Um, there's only someone talented out there who's just staring at too. You might have to look a bit harder to find them. Find your own balance between quality and quantity. It's very tricky to do. I still have mastered this after eight years, but try not to upload something just because you feel like you should if you're not proud of your work. Ooh, these are good tips, actually. I'm going to read the rest as a result. Put yourself out there. People appreciate honesty and authenticity on YouTube. Do you know what? I was thinking to say I feel bad for reading this out because it's like um, this is actually quite useful stuff and I feel like I'm depriving the people who made it of the little bits of use in there. And, well, for profiting off them, more to the point, because, you know, that's why they made it. Then it occurs to me, it ended up in Poundland, so it's probably already past its uh, profitable period. Uh, put yourself out there. People appreciate honesty and authenticity on YouTube. Don't feel like you need to do this in every video. It's okay just to be funny sometimes. Or possibly, you can be like Ashens and never be funny at all. Um, blah, 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 blah. Any advice? The best advice anyone gave you. Never tie your shoelace in a revolving door. Estee Lalonde, essay button, pro tips. Content is key. Getting involved in the vlogger community is central. Blah 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 blah. Mr. Dalek JD. Mr. Dalek. That's an interesting name. Make sure you upload often. This will get your audience used to knowing when a new upload is coming, so they can be ready to watch. It also makes them feel a subscription is more worthwhile, as there's new content regularly. Or just stick it out twice a week, almost at random, like I do. Oh God. This is just the beginning. How much was this originally, do you think? Um, in Vlogstar Volume 2, we will be sharing our next set of expert tips, plus provide you with your next Vlogstar tool. Hmm, interesting. I wonder where this was. Oh, this book is not affiliated with YouTube or Google. Yeah, very little is, mate. Um, I wonder where this was originally sold. Where would you go and buy this? Bookshops? Do you think they had tried to get it on the stands in, like, uh, supermarkets and stuff? I do wonder. But I have no answers. I tell you what I am going to do though. Uh, see if there isn't RRP or something on it. No, there isn't. They're usually sensible enough to not do that these days. So there you go. So um, what have I learned from that? Yes, it's your boy Ashens here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell, which, which is something I don't think I've ever actually asked anyone to like or subscribe other than like having it say subscribe in an end card. And I've also never said ring that bell, which is very bloody stupid because uh, YouTube these days don't like showing you the subscriptions they like showing you things they have invented themselves that you might like so um, yeah there's like a little bell next to the subscribe thing and if you press that it gives you options and then you can basically say tell me every time a video comes out from this person because if not you'll just get shoved one algorithmically ah oh, it's got me thinking about all the bloody technical YouTube stuff now isn't it Oh, how depressing. Well, never mind, I have the items here to cheer myself up. Look, I can use this spoon to depress my tongue and stop myself choking to death when I take this and shove it right up my... Subscribe for more.